What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're having an awesome day so far. I certainly am, I got my coffee, I got some work done this morning, and I'm ready to make a video for you guys today. So of course, today we are talking about the tone curve in Lightroom. This is a feature that I think a lot of people really love to overcomplicate, but it's actually quite simple, and understanding this one feature in Lightroom can really help take your photos to the next level, and also help you develop a consistent style that you can have amongst all of your images, which is super, super important if you're trying to get clients or you're trying to develop a consistent looking portfolio. Last week I posted a video, it was a behind the scenes shoot with me and my friend Alex where we went out and we shot a bunch of photos here in Bali. Um, and a lot of you guys messaged me on Instagram saying, how did you edit the photos the way that you did? I really like those nice, soft, natural looking tones. Um, and actually that was all done in the tone curve. So today, not only am I gonna show you guys what the tone curve is, break it down, explain it a little bit, but I'm also gonna show you guys how I edited those images um, using the tone curve and how I kept the style kind of consistent among all of those images as well. If you guys didn't see that video, I highly recommend checking it out. It's super vibey, it's like five minutes long, but I really had a great time making it. And if that's something you guys wanna see more of, let me know because I enjoy making those videos, but I only wanna make them if it's something you guys are interested in as well. But let's jump on the computer now, let's dive into Lightroom, talk about the tone curve a little bit, um, and edit some photos. Okay, welcome to my little desk setup here. We got Lightroom open. Um, and I have a few images open that I shot with Alexandra the other day. So this first one here um, is quite nice. I love the green, I love how soft it looks right off the bat. Now I made some basic adjustments because I always like to do that before I go into the tone curve, but I just basically made it as neutral as possible. So I increased the shadows, reduced the highlights and made it a little bit brighter just to make sure we have something nice and flat to work with in the tone curve, which is right down here, this infamous little guy right here. And at first glance, it looks super intimidating, but first let's break it down and talk about what it is. So the tone curve is essentially a feature in Lightroom that dictates the overall brightness of our scene. And moving that line affects the brightness of our image. And you can understand the tone curve by breaking it down in terms of quadrants. So bottom left is representing blacks, right here is representing shadows, the middle is the midtones. Uh, top right is the highlights, and in the very top right is the whites, so the very brightest parts of the images. And if you move the line below midpoint, it makes the image darker, and if you move it above midpoint, it makes the image brighter. Now, I think a lot of people are wondering, well, why would you use the tone curve if you can do all of those same things with the basic adjustments? And you kind of can do the same things with the basic adjustments, but the tone curve just gives us so much more control over our image because it allows us to edit specific tones within the image. For example, if we wanted to edit shadows, yes, we can go here and drag the shadows down, but that's only affecting shadows as a whole. If we use the tone curve, we can impact very specific parts of the shadows. Like if we wanted shadows more in the midtones, then we can bring those down. If we wanted shadows more in the blacker areas, we can bring those down. So you can be very, very specific with just the tonal range in your images to get the perfect amount of contrast, the perfect amount of softness, or however you want your photo to look. Now, before we start moving this around and before I show you how to actually use it, I wanna talk about all these different little things you see here on the top. So this first one here, this little kind of S thing, is basically the foolproof method, the easy method for adjusting the tone curve. However, I do not particularly use this. Now, what's great about this is it gives you sliders so you can edit the highlighted areas uh, and the lights, etc., and you can just kind of drag and you know, make it look how you wanna look, which is great. Um, now this isn't something I use, like I said, but it is there uh, and it is a cool feature, but we're not gonna be focusing on that in this video. We're gonna be doing it from scratch where you have this tone curve and you can edit everything here. Now the second dot here, this gray one that I'm clicked on now is the RGB tone curve. So this means it's affecting all three color channels in our image. An image is made up of red, green, and blue pixels. Um, and this tone curve allows us to edit all of them together. Now you can also edit them individually. And, and you can see if I click on the red, the green, the blue, I can edit those channels. And editing those will, yes, increase or decrease contrast or change the tonal range, but only among those specific colors in the image. So if you see the red here, if I drag the shadows down, it's gonna make the image blue. 
If I drag it up, it's gonna make the image red. But we're gonna get to those soon. For now, I wanna focus on the most important part of the tone curve, the thing that you're gonna be using the most, which is just the RGB tone curve here. Now, like I said before, the bottom left is the blacks, shadows, midtones, highlights, and whites. Uh, and we can basically move these points around to change the overall tonal structure of our image. And one of the things you've probably seen in other videos is an S curve. And an S curve is basically where you put three points on the tone curve here and you drag the shadows down, you drag the highlights up, and that creates a little bit of an S. Now, why that's great is because it just adds so much contrast into our scene. You can see those before and there's the after. We're bringing down the shadows, we're leaving the midtones where they are, and we're bringing up the highlights. Now, we can also do something where we actually change the black and the white point of our images to make them much softer. And if we drag this bottom left corner up, we're actually changing the black areas towards gray. And the higher you go up, the more gray it looks. You can see it gets kind of funky. Now, I love this because it looks like film to me. So I like to drag this bottom point up and really soften out those black areas uh, and just make it a little bit more gray looking. I also like to do the same thing with the highlights. Dragging this right hand corner down will turn those highlights more towards gray, which also makes it look softer. Now, once you have this S curve here, this is a really, really great starting point. Um, but you can go ahead and kind of adjust the tones independently to make sure you have the look that you want. And if you guys saw that video, like I said, all of the photos that I edited for that video were done with a very similar tone curve to this. I really like to bring those blacks up to make them nice and soft, but I also still like to maintain really good mid-tone contrast. So now for the workflow with the tone curve, I like to basically create my S curve to increase the contrast there. And then I like to come back to the basic adjustments and kind of fool around with it there as well, just to really dial in the specific look that I'm going for. So I think honestly, this looks really nice. And with the tones out of the way, then I can go on to edit color and things like that. But we're not gonna be doing that in this video. We're focusing on the tone curve in particular. Now I do wanna say you can really do whatever you want with this. The S curve is nice because it looks natural and it's still very soft and it kind of has a filmic look, but you can really play around with all of these different points. If you want the, the highlights to be softer, you can drag that down below the line. Um, if you want your blacks to be softer, you can drag those up and make it really gray looking. And you can really do whatever you want with this. There's so much freedom and so much control that you have over your image. So I just recommend playing with it, you know, mess around with it and, and try to come up with something cool. Now let's move on to the second image here. Uh, I edited the basic adjustments once again, just to make it a little bit soft. Um, so I just, you know, increase the exposure a little bit, raise the shadows and reduce the highlights. But now let's do the same thing on the tone curve. And actually one of the cool things about Lightroom is we can just copy and paste the tone curve from the first image. So I go on my computer, hit Command C on my keyboard, hit copy. I'll go over to this photo here and I'll just hit Command V and it will paste our tone curve directly onto this photo. And for the most part, it looks pretty good, but it is a little bit dark. So we can edit the tone curve or we can also come up here to the shadows and do it there. Now, one of the cool things about having a tone curve consistent among all of your images is it really gives your portfolio a very consistent look. So if you see, I put these two images next to each other, even though the colors are so different, the tone curve is exactly the same. And that gives us the same tonal range in our images and it allows our portfolio to look very, very consistent. So when it comes to like Instagram, for example, I recommend using the same tone curve or at least very similar tone curves for all of your photos because that will create a lot of consistency in your images. The most important parts are the black point and the white point. Having consistency in those is going to result in a very consistent portfolio. But yeah, after I added those, I can just make my finite adjustments and then I can go on to editing color as well. But now I wanna take it a step further and talk about the specific RGB channels that we have here. Now, as I said before, adjusting these RGB channels will allow us to edit the tones within specific color ranges of our images. So you can see here, I've, I've created an S curve on all three of these, but the S curves I created here are actually identical to each other. The reason I did that is because if they're not identical to each other, you're gonna be introducing more colors into your scene. For example, right now they're all the same, but if I go into the red channel and I slightly drag this down, 
you're going to see that's going to add blue into the shadow areas. And you can see that because there's blue on this side of the tone curve and red up here. So if I drag it down, it's going to turn blue. So there's without the blue added and there's with the blue added. And the same thing goes, I can drag it up and it's going to add red into the shadow areas. Uh, I can do the same thing with the highlights. I can add red into the highlights by dragging that up or I can add blue into the highlights by dragging that down. Now, if I go into the green, I can do the same thing, but now it's purple and green and in the blue channels, it's blue and yellow. So for example, if I wanna add yellow into the shadows, I can drag that down to do that, which I think looks pretty cool. I think it adds a lot of warmth into the scene. Um, and if I wanted to add blue into the highlights, I can do that there as well. So you really do have so much control not only over the colors, but of the contrast as well. But one of the cool things about Lightroom now is you can actually save your specific tone curves. Yes, you can save it in a preset or you can save it in a point curve here. So you can see I already have some saved here. The linear, medium contrast and strong contrast are actually built into Lightroom and those will come with it. So you can just, you know, click between those. Um, but if you customize it, then it'll say custom and then you can click that, click save and it will actually create a custom point curve for you there. Now I'm gonna show you guys two of the ones that I have. This is the ultra soft curve. This is the one that I use for pretty much all of the edits that you saw in that video. And then I actually made an even softer one, the ultra mega soft curve, where you can see that point here, the black point goes up. So you can see the difference between those. It just makes it nice and soft in the highlights and in the shadows as well. However, the independent RGB channels are staying the same. So what I did when I was editing these images is I actually used the same tone curve with most of the photos that you saw in that video just to make sure that they looked very consistent to each other. There were a few outliers because I wanted to play around with some different editing styles. So you will see some differences in the video. Um, but as a whole, this was the tone curve that I used. And this is actually one of the tone curves that you get in my classic portrait preset pack. It is the soft modern preset. Um, you can see if I apply that and I can just drag the exposure up a little bit. It's the same preset. So if you guys are interested in checking those out, I use those presets on all of the images that you saw in that video. And I think you guys might find it useful. But that is the tone curve guys. That's the gist of it. It really isn't that complicated. And I recommend you to just play around with it, mess around with it, you know, create some dots and move them around and kind of see what you can come up with. I think it really is an essential feature to understand if you want to become a good editor in Lightroom. And like I said, and like I showed you, it's super, super important for creating that consistent style among all of your images. So create some tone curves, save them, and just kind of add them into your editing workflow and play around with them because you can really create some really cool edits um, and develop a very consistent portfolio as well. But that is the end of this video, guys. And if you enjoyed the video, you found it useful, please leave a comment down below letting me know. Or if you guys have any specific questions about the tone curve or any other features in Lightroom, leave those down below as well. I respond to every single comment that is posted on my videos. I take time doing that every morning. So if you take the time to leave a comment, I will take the time to respond as well. I love engaging with you guys. I think it's important for me as a creator to understand what you guys want, understand what you're looking for from this channel. So I hope we can continue to have an open dialogue going forward. But thank you guys again for watching this video and I'll see you again next week.